Sup? Sup? School lockdowns can be some of the most terrifying things you can experience. The right, yeah. 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 Or! 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 You either have a school lockdown or nothing. See, me personally, you either have one, a real one, where people can get clocked up, possibly, like a 90, 10, you know, 90%, they're gonna get clocked up. Or don't have it. Cause I don't like, I don't like the in between, I don't like that, I don't like, I don't like a drill. I don't like a false uh, lockdown, you know, like for practice, I don't like that. And I'll explain why I don't like that at the end of the video. Oh, fear of what's gonna happen next is very overwhelming for a lot of people. Right. Sometimes even if it's just a drill. In this video, we'll be going over three terrifying true school lockdown horror stories. If you guys do enjoy horror stories told in the first person format, all I ask is that you consider subscribing, as that's the only content we post, and we upload around four videos weekly, sometimes even more. And be sure to stay to the end of the video, as honestly, all of today's stories are absolutely terrifying. With that being said, let's continue into the school lockdown horror stories. <clears throat> it was a completely normal, boring school day. I was in 7th period math, and the clock showed 2.45pm, which means the school day was nearly done. As it was a Friday, and spring break was just around the corner, you could feel everyone getting antsy in their seats. A lot of people had tests and whatnot, whereas my class got to have fun. We had a super laid-back teacher who loved to entertain us as much as possible. We oh. lucked out in that sense. Me and my girlfriend Haley were messing around in the back, talking about something that occurred earlier that day. When it happened, the alarm for the lockdown went off, and the principal came over the loudspeaker. Now, for some context, typically a teacher would yell lockdown three times if it was a drill. We were always told if it was four times, it was not a drill. The reason for this was to hide the fact that we knew someone was in the building with malicious intent. Four times we heard the word lockdown. Now, I've gotten so used to hearing it only three times that I paid no attention to how many times lockdown was even said. The teacher did the usual, turning off the lights, closing the door, and ushering us to the back. You are clucky for that. You are cluck ass for that. You need to pay attention to how many Pay attention. Pay attention. What you talking about? If I was in that school, if I was you, I'm paying attention to every single time she says was it lockdown or school lockdown if she says that shit more than three times it's right i'm getting clucked out of there i feel like i'm more safer outside than i am being trapped in the school because what if the trigger what if the intruder what if the what's the name is inside the school we're all clucked another room where we couldn't be seen from the glass on the door our classroom had two doors one at the front and one at the back. In the midst of all the commotion, me and Haley did the one thing you should never do in a lockdown. We snuck out of the class. We were now in the hallway on the third floor. Everything looks so weird. Not a single person in sight other than the two of us. A sort of humming noise came from the walls, indicating the school had cut all the power. I thought this was weird, as I thought it was only a drill. Hey, why would they cut up the power if it's just a drill? I asked. This was when we really started to question if it was actually a drill or not. But with us being stupid teenagers, we brushed it off as nothing. We continued roaming the halls when we started to hear a sound. We got really creeped out by this, as no one was supposed to be outside the class. Fearing it was a teacher, we ran into the nearest bathroom to hide. We ran into the fourth stall that was tucked into the corner and hid. We sort of just sat there, giggling, thinking we outsmarted the teacher. What the, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, really? Like, what, what is wrong with you? Because why? Oh, you go outside. First of all, your teacher says lockdown multiple times. Four times. To be exact. Right? Everybody looks scared as shit. Your teacher's scared as shit. Right? Hiding and whatnot. Right? Y'all sneak out. I don't know how y'all sneaked out, but y'all sneaked out. 
you go out in the in the hallways and the main lights is cut off like you like I just had a blackout yeah I want to go into the bathroom and start giggling think this shit a game who playing a game who play who playing games Maybe about 30 seconds had passed, and we started to hear the footsteps again, but this time much closer. My heart froze. I could tell it was right outside the door. At this point, we were sure we'd been caught. We kept as quiet and as still as possible, hoping not to make a sound. It was really weird though. The person outside hadn't come in yet, but they hadn't left either. If they left, we would have clearly heard their footsteps leaving, but we never heard them. Haley pointed this out to me, and that's when we started taking the situation a bit more seriously. Oh yeah? The door opened, and someone stepped in. I was about to walk out of the stall and apologize for sneaking off when Haley stopped me. She whispered to me, Isn't it protocol for teachers to ask if there's anyone in the bathroom? She was right. This wasn't normal teacher behavior, and that's when the heart-dropping realization hit us. Whoever was in the bathroom with us wasn't a teacher. While contemplating what to do, the silence was broken. I know you're in there. My heart dropped as the person said that. Holy the voice shit. was younger, and it obviously wasn't a teacher. We were practically crying at this point, unable to hold it back. The guy was now directly in front of the stall door. He started pounding on the door and screaming like a madman. <laughs> Give me a second. God damn. I got chills. Holy shit. Oh. Oh. As this was happening, though, I heard the door open again, followed by the familiar voice of my teacher, Mr. Taylor. Hey, what the hell are you doing? I heard a scuffle outside, and I immediately rushed to aid my teacher. Eventually, we got the guy held down, and the cops were called. Apparently, the man was an escapee from a mental asylum near the school, and thankfully, no one got hurt. How are you an escapee? What the hell? I don't know what the you... hell? What? For a mental asylum? Isn't that what that place is in Outlast? I think so. How did you escape that shit? I feel like security at those places is a little bit more tighter than than the ones like at a prison or a jail. It might be the same security. I don't know. But like you're you're crazy. You're crazy. I feel like you're crazy. I feel like people are crazy and I use that in in ways that I don't know how to. You're crazy. I just, that's just how I feel. If you go to, a, if you are a mental, me, mental, mental asylum patient, you are certified crazy. So with that being said, they should have security out the ass and not, oof, excuse me, and not bullshit in their job. Take that shit seriously, Jesus. Because you let a mother clucker out, shit like this is going to happen. You let a mother clucker slip, they're going to slip and kill somebody. You guys remember a few years ago when a sort of killer clown craze shook America for a few months? Yeah, man, yeah. Well, this all happened during that time. I always remembered me and my friends thought it was funny. And we'd always watch those clown caught on camera. Ain't shit funny about no goddamn clown. Never have and never will be. I promise you that one. I promise you that. I promise you that. Is that what? I don't know if any of you guys remember a few years ago oh. when a sort of killer clown craze shook America for a few months. Well, this all happened during that time. I always remembered me and my friends thought it was funny. And we'd always watch those clown caught on camera videos that were really popular at lunch. Although, our laughter turned into fear when we were made aware that a few of those clowns on Twitter threatened to come to our school at 11am that day and quote-unquote kill all of us. 
Luckily, the school picked up on this, and they sent out emails to the parents that they had scheduled a planned lockdown at 10.30 that day in response to the threats. I was sitting in history class when I heard the familiar sound of the lockdown alarm, followed by the teacher rushing to the windows and door, locking and closing them. Even though initially the threat freaked me out, I wasn't worried at this point. I reasoned that it was most likely just another blank threat online, and that nothing would happen. After about... Clucky, clucky for thinking like that. You are clucky and clucky. I just, yeah, yeah. You're in the middle of a clown epidemic. You gotta take any threat to the max. 40 minutes of silence, sitting on the cold floor in the corner of the room. The emergency green flashing light turned off, then followed by the air conditioning, slowly falling silent and then the hallway lights switched off. The school had cut the power, but why though? At this point, me and my classmates were staring at each other. We all knew that something real was going on, as the school never cut off the power unless something serious was happening. After 10 minutes or so, we could all hear a faint banging noise from down the corridor, wow. shortly followed by heavy and fast footsteps. Someone was running down the hallway, they started banging on the lockers and screaming. At this point, a few girls started quietly crying. Just then, the most terrifying thing ever happened. One of the men, dressed as a clown, ran up to the class door, banging and screaming. Multiple people were crying now, and one of my friends whispered to me in complete seriousness, saying we're all gonna die. I have no shame in admitting that this caused me to start crying too. I then heard the loud sound of glass shattering. We not, we, what'd he say? We all about to die, we're dead, we're dead, ah, we're all about to, not me, not me, you don't know why, two things are going to happen, either, I, Gator, Jump out the window, regardless of how many stories it's, it's, it's up. Or two, I, once that clown breaks in and gets inside this room, I literally throw one of you guys at the clown. Use you as bait. And the haul ass like a mother clucking shattered the glass part of the door, and I could see his arm reaching through to try to unlock the door from the inside. I was frozen and in complete disbelief as to what I was witnessing. But luckily, my teacher reacted quickly, grabbing a piece of shattered glass from the ground and stabbing the man's arm before he could unlock the door. He instantly grabbed his arm back, and you could hear his screams of pain. He then quickly stepped away from the door, and his screams slowly faded down the corridor. After another two hours, the principal came on the loudspeaker, explaining everything. He said that just after 11, two men walked into the school, one holding a kitchen knife. They ran around the school, threatening to kill students and trying to- Just walks up into a school. God damn, this had to be back. Yeah, it was definitely back in the day. But even then, during that clown epidemic, I felt like security should have been even more tight. Like you should have already had security, but then when that whole clown epidemic happened, Y'all should have upped your security because ain't no way in the world, ain't no way two guys coming in with a sharp ass object just walks up into a school with ease. Oh my God. Taking to classrooms. But once the police raided the school, only one of them was caught. And it wasn't the one who tried to break into our classroom. After the whole event, the school got over 20 buses to take the younger kids home. And the kids 9th grade and over, like me, were told to walk home in groups and call the cops if we saw anything suspicious. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Either, either I missed it. Or the, uh, the what's the names? I don't know what you, the, 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 the school staff. Once these kids, these kids clocked up, because why would you tell these kids to walk home in a group? 
Maybe they caught him. Maybe they caught these two guys. Oh, only one of them was caught. Oh. And it wasn't the one who tried to break into our classroom. After the whole event, the school got over 20 buses to take the young. Only one of them was caught. Only one was caught. What? There's a possibility of kids getting clucked up or dead because there's still one out there. Their kids home and the kids ninth grade and over like me were told to walk home in groups and call the cops if we saw anything suspicious. And that's another thing. Why are you, why are you in a group? You make yourself, you make y'all selves a bigger target. Spread out! hard week at school after that experience. I was always thinking that the men would return, this time with a gun or something, but nothing happened. This, nonetheless, will be scarred into my mind forever. Ever since the lockdown, the school has hired a few more on-campus police officers, and they've installed some auto-locking features on doors and windows. This has made me feel a little bit better in school, but this isn't just an experience you can simply forget about. I would never forget that shit. I live in the middle of nowhere. The school I go to has maybe 500 students in total. It's enough for everyone to know everyone's name. Regardless, this day our school went on lockdown. That familiar, yet eerie chime of our principal's voice saying to remain in our classes until further notice rang through the building over the intercoms. His voice was surprisingly calm, especially considering the fact that he didn't even say it was a drill. Despite our little town, crime isn't completely unheard of. We've had our fair share of reported break-ins, robberies, and even some gang activity. I bet it's a robber down at Chase Bank, my friend Kyle joked. I laughed, and we started talking about what we actually thought the whole lockdown was for. Kyle's voice was beginning to get louder, only interrupted by our teacher, Miss Sander, herself shushing him. It had now been about ten minutes of complete silence. But, like most high schoolers tend to, we all lost our patience. Everyone was now talking softly to whoever they were sitting next to at this point. Just then, we all heard it. Footsteps. Not just one pair, but a few walking down the hall. We all went quiet, knowing that something was wrong, and if this was a drill, it would have been just one pair of footsteps, that being the teacher checking on the classrooms. Even Kyle, who had previously been talking, grew silent. Miss Sander moved slowly to the doorway, peering out from behind a corner. The heaviness in the air was suffocating. Just then, we heard footsteps again, seemingly doing another lap around the school. A girl across the room let out a muffled sob of fear. I focused my attention on the door. I was leaning out from behind a table to peer through the window to see if I could see anything. I'm not sure what I expected to see, but whatever I was expecting, a whole lot of nothing was not it. The hallway was empty and completely dark, as it tends to be when no one was in it. The lights were all automated in my school, but just then, Noticed some of them turn on. Huh. A oh, light, oh, oh. yellow light instantly filled the room as we huddled in, casting shadows against the rows of desks. Someone somewhere tried to calm the crying girl, but I could hear their own murmured voice waver. I was still looking through the door's window from a distance at this point. But of course, as I was doing this, I saw someone walk up to the window and start looking through into the room. I instantly ducked back down behind the table the whole class was hiding behind. I felt my heart beat wildly as I heard the sound of the doorknob start to shift. My vision grew static as I pulled my knees to my chest, curling up tightly in the corner of the room. The door shook as the guy banged on it repeatedly. And as I was doing this, my biggest fear came true. The door uh, just uh, gave out. Hold up! I proceeded to walk into the classroom. All of us went silent, praying this man wouldn't walk over to the corner of the room and see all of us hiding behind this table. About a minute passed of just this guy standing there. And we could hear someone else sprang to the door, followed by the words, Dude, we gotta go. The cops are already here. That's when I heard the guy start running out of the room and down the hall. The cops came, and a little later that was it. The guys who entered the school were never caught, and apparently they were armed with guns. Wow. The story goes that one of the kids at my school tweeted at a gang, essentially making fun of them the night before that school day. This is one person's fault? This is one person's fault? Well, how about we throw that one person out there? 
to the ones that's like just that's 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 trying to cut everybody up. We didn't do this shit. It was him. It was Alex. It was Alex. Alex is the one you want here. <laughs> you better yeet Alex to these mother causes and let them cook up Alex, not all of us. Oh my God. It was Alex's fault. Of course, the gang took it very seriously and planned on raiding the school and killing the kid responsible. Luckily, they weren't successful, but this experience still terrifies me nonetheless. Sorry, tired. Oh shit, I, I thought it was off. Okay, like I said earlier in the video, man, man. Okay, I'm gonna try to say this. I'm gonna try to explain to this. I'm gonna try to explain this to you all the best way I can. But this is from Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones uh, stand up. He was like, the reason he don't like school drills, like lockdown drills, uh, is because you, okay, see, I can't really explain it now. But like one of the reasons that he doesn't like it is because you're essentially training um, and telling the future, you know, possibly a future um, clocky that's in the room where everybody's gonna hide what the what the plan is to do so when a, when somebody comes in and cluck us up like you telling all the kids to go over here in the corner huddle up that if this is a intruder like if this is a a lockdown for real, like a break in, um, we also telling him, you know, excuse me, you know, we're gonna say four, we're gonna say lockdown four times, and that's real, you know. You telling you telling the kid that might cluck up, you know, people in the future, what the whole school plan is when shit hit the fan. But the reason I don't like the, I personally don't like the drills. It's because it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna run regardless. I'm going to run. I'm gonna haul ass kick rocks regardless. I'll be damned if I stay stuck in one spot behind some locked doors, and if by chance the uh. The intruder breaks in, gets into my room. It's rap. It's raps. It's raps. And I don't got time for it. So I'm rather, I, th I feel like I'm more safe outside than I am inside. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.